Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time was released for the Nintendo 64 in 1998 and became an instant classic. It was praised by many and is still often called the best game of all time. It was the first 3D Zelda game so it was miles different than A Link to the Past and the other games in the franchise. Gamers were curious to what the next release would be in the Zelda universe and it turns out that they didn't have to wait a long time until a direct sequel to Ocarina of Time came out. In the year 2000, Majora's Mask was released. We got a Zelda game that was much darker compared to the releases that came before it. Themes of death, loneliness and fear give the game a more mature feel. Another new mechanic was the time limit. You basically relive the same three days over and over having to reset time using the Song of Time. Or else you and everyone in Clock Town gets killed by the giant moon in the sky. It's safe to say that Majora's Mask is one of the best games ever made and should be played by many, but a question has to be answered first. What is the best way to play Majora's Mask? No matter how good a game is, you obviously still want to play the best way that is available to you. And that is why I am making this list. I will be ranking every way to play this game and comparing them with each other. This is not just a video comparing the graphics or clarity of each release, but I will also be talking about performance, features, mods and controllers. One note about this is that I won't be including the Chinese exclusive IQ because I don't own it and you probably don't own it either. Throughout the video I will be mentioning two mods, the Redux mod and the Project Restoration mod. First I will be talking about the Redux mod. I find the Redux mod for me a must have. It adds a ton of features including this d-pad that is mapped to use the ocarina and transformation masks at all time. This way you don't have to put those items on C buttons. If you have the possibility to use this mod, you really should. Installing it is really easy. You just need to download the Patcher 64 Plus tool, insert your ROM or WAD file, choosing which features you want, and then patching it. Throughout the list I will mention which consoles and releases support this mod. The other mod, the Project Restoration mod, is for the 3DS release. The 3DS release of Majora's Mask made changes that the community was not happy with. I will not be going over all the changes, but I do feel like it is the inferior release of Majora's Mask compared to the original one, especially if you played the 3DS version after the original one. And that's where the Project Restoration comes in. It turns back a lot of those changes and makes the game much better. If you are interested in the changes and features of this mod, you can find them on the site. Some features from the Redux also made a comeback, like the D-pad for the Ocarina and masks. This can be installed on a modded 3DS and on Citra, the 3DS emulator. For the emulators, I will also be using a texture pack. For the Nintendo 64 version, I will be using Neryl's pack, and for the 3DS game, I will be using Henrico Magnifico's texture pack. Now that we got all that out of the way, we can start going through the list. Enjoy! In 2003, Nintendo had a great idea. A Zelda compilation game. The Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition included the first two NES games and both N64 games. The only problem was that Majora's Mask's release on this disc was very buggy, plagued with random crashes, performance issues and graphical inaccuracies. Here is a comparison of the intro's fog. I must add though that turning off the rumble feature in the beginning will make the game more stable and the video output from this release was upgraded from 240p to 480p. However, this does not make up for all the problems that come with it and therefore is the worst release in my opinion. The Wii U Virtual Console was notoriously bad, which is a shame, because the Wii U was the first HD console and its Virtual Console could have been great because of that. Now, what was so bad about the Wii U Virtual Console? Well, the colors are washed out, it's like there's a dark filter over the visuals, but that's not what ruins this release. The worst problem is the input lag. I can press the B button three times before it actually slashes for the first time. 
If you're not sensitive to input lag and the dark filter, you might find this release okay and playable. In the case your Wii U is modded, you can inject a Redux modded ROM file into the Virtual Console's emulator and use the Redux mod, which makes it slightly better. If you must play this game on the Wii U console, play the Wii Virtual Console release through the V-Wii, if your Wii U is modded at least. If you're a purist, the original Nintendo 64 version is the one you'll go with. There's nothing really wrong with this way to play. The game runs at the slowest resolution out of the other versions at 240p to be exact. Even though it is a very low resolution, it still looks great when it's hooked up to a CRT using S video cables. If you're not playing on a CRT, but on a more modern screen, you can mod your Nintendo 64 to output through HDMI and it looks great. But the mod itself is quite expensive, so keep that in mind. The controls of Majora's Mask are built around the Nintendo 64 controller, meaning you'll have a great experience using it. The expansion pack is also needed to play it on the original console, however, which can be very expensive and hard to find. Note that if you own an EverDrive 64, you can play the Redux mod on the original console, which is great. The Wii eShop opened the possibility to sell retro games digitally on a new console. The Nintendo 64 emulation they used for the Wii works and plays great. The only downside you will get is that there is no rumble feature present, but that's not a game breaker. The Wii did not support HDMI, so when you're using component cables, 480p will be the highest resolution you can use. If your Wii has the GameCube ports on the top, the WaveBird controller should be your controller of choice. If that's a little too expensive, then get a GameCube controller. The Wii Classic controller is still a good controller, but it feels less comfortable than the GameCube controller with this game. If you want to play this version today, you will need to mod your Wii in order to install it. Soft modding your Wii is really easy these days. It's done through the Wi-Fi and only takes mere minutes. After that, it's just installing a WAD file using a WAD installer. This way you can also install a Redux modded WAD file. I should also note that you can install this game on the Wii U's virtual Wii and it will work the same. The only difference there is that you can't use your GameCube controller. The Switch Online port is the most recent official release of Majora's Mask. The emulation is good and accurate, the input delay is there but it's not so noticeable and it's the only official way to play the original game in truly portable form. I personally do not like the borders on this release and the little bar at the bottom making the game even smaller. There's also a point to be made that because it's a subscription based service you don't actually own the game and that can be a deal breaker for some people. If you own a modded Switch, you can inject a Redux modded ROM file into the emulator and play the Redux mod this way. The release does support Rumble, which is a plus, and using an N64 Switch controller works great and feels comfortable with this game. Overall, a good release by Nintendo. The 2015 remake of Majora's Mask was quite different from the original game. The touchscreen works great, there are four item buttons of which two are touchscreen controlled and there is a button just for the ocarina as well. These changes are good and welcome in my opinion, but where they did drop the ball is that Deku skipping on water and Zora swimming are very broken and problematic in this game. If you're interested in all the changes in the remake, there are videos on YouTube that will go over every change. I won't be going over them all in this video. Just know that in my opinion the 3DS game is less enjoyable and that's why I do recommend modding your 3DS and installing the restoration project. Modding is completely free and will take about an hour of your time. Once the mod is installed, it's a much better experience and deserves a higher spot on this list. That's why it's in a number 4 spot. Now we're left with the top 3, which are all unofficial emulation options. Dolphin is a GameCube and Wii emulator. You can emulate the Wii Virtual Console release and the GameCube Collector's Edition release. I personally went for the Wii port, because that way you can also use the Redux mod. On top of the Redux mod, I also used Neryl's Texture Pack, which looks incredible in my opinion. The Texture Pack is based on the original textures and don't change the feel of the game. 
The emulator handles the game well, but can struggle from time to time. It's not perfect. If you're interested in installing these textures, you can check out Nero's video. He does a great job explaining how to set everything up. Using the Better Majora's Mask installer by Rosalie241 is very simple. It will install a pre-configured Project 64 with all the textures. You just need to provide the ROM. And again, you can use the Redux mod here. Using the pre-configured emulator, the game worked well and played great. Again, Neryl made a great video explaining how to install and configure this. I would say that if you want to play the original game, this is the best way to play it currently. The experience was smooth, reliable and very impressive. They did a great job. Paired with the Project Restoration mod and Henrico Magnifico's texture pack, this game looks and plays amazing. If you're interested in playing this way, you can follow his video I will link below, detailing how to install the texture pack and how to install the mod. On top of the Restoration mod, you can also install the HD HUD mod, making it so you can have your health, magic, rupees and buttons on the top screen instead of the bottom screen. This makes playing it on the one screen much more comfortable and playable. It really does make a big difference. On top of that, the 3DS remake also allows controlling the camera with the C-Stick, which was not very useful with the 3DS, but translates really well to a more modern controller when playing on the Citra emulator. I do think that Nero's texture pack does look better and keeps the original feel more, but all the 3DS improvements like better models, more detailed environments and all the other improvements I talked about makes this for me the best way to play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Before signing off, I would like to mention the ongoing decompilation of Majora's Mask. On the website zelda64.dev, you can check the progress of each Zelda game that is being decompiled at this moment. Once a game has been fully decompiled, the possibility of a PC port becomes viable and is most likely to happen. Just like it happened with Super Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time. Once that happens, the PC port will be the best way to play because of all the possibilities of improvements that will come with it. That being said, I hope you enjoyed my video. I record everything with my Elgato connected to an M Classic. If you have any suggestion for another game, please let me know. Thanks for watching.